Alright, All right. No, you go first. I was going to say, guys, can you just state your names and your roles for the reporters? Uh, Brandon Braga, uh, executive producer, writer. Uh, Tom Costantino, co producer, supervisor, editor. Me, me first? Oh, okay. And so, with the new name, we all got new horizons. We were kind of expecting lots of new planets, new places. But the feel of the show felt a bit more retrospective. You we were revisiting all their needs, like Martha and Phil, and that all the characters are bringing back in, like today, even Lisa Lisa's character. So, what was the reasoning behind that? I think I think the New Horizons. It, 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 we are meeting new. We are meeting new characters like the Denise we re we referenced before, and met like Anderson and Bolivar and stuff. So I believe that there is that opportunity. But of course now we've been. So I feel that you know, and obviously I didn't, I didn't write it, but as someone who's very near here, here to his heart, there's a lot of there's a lot of backstory. We have character development now, and that and that sort of needs to be in service. So. It's, it's not like it was in season one where everything is just new and you're just introducing all over the place and everything is a fresh exploration. We, we have to we have to come back and sort of continue to evolve those stories and sometimes resolve those stories in order to, you know, maybe in another season, go and meet new and interesting characters. New Horizons also meant a new ship. The ship was retrofitted with a new look, um, a new running time, which was perhaps the biggest change of all. And what, you, what you're seeing is are these feature-length storylines with feature quality visual effects as well. But it's uh, the show is just really that's to me anyway. What new men? In some ways, it's metaphorical. Mm. Well, then, will we see a resolution to the Kalon storyline? Because obviously, that's the epic part. We still have watch. two episodes oh, left. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to watch. Call me up in about two weeks, yeah. and I'll tell you everything. Okay. What are the oh, sir? I was wondering if you could talk about the the long road to get to season three. You had this production pause uh, after uh, Fox said it was going to be delayed, and then Hulu announced that they were picking it up, and then COVID came, and there were multiple stops, starts and stops with that. Did, did that at any way, in any way affect the, the storytelling that, that you had stuff in the can and then you had a break? Did, did it alter the story at all? Were had a chance to look back on it and say, oh, well, we, maybe we should take it this direction. No, not, not, not at all. In fact, some of these scripts were written two and a half years ago. Yep. Uh, and we, the scripts were good. We, we filmed them and edited them as written. It was a coincidence that some of the stuff that they've got, like the, the, there's a scene dealing with abortion in one of the episodes that yeah. happened to air during the Roe v. Wade controversy. That was just a coincidence. That was written in almost three years ago. So that was, we didn't go back. And, no. I will say two things that, that, that did sort of alter is that we had, you know, when you're sitting in your home, you have a lot of time to work on the episode. So we basically treated them like features, you know, like sometimes in television, even expand television, you got to get them out, get them out, get them out. We poured over these things like, like basically like a, a movie. And that, and then putting that detail in to make sure every single ounce of it was perfect. That's kind of why it's up on screen. That, I just that's, realized that's a good point. There is one thing we did. I think you can accept it. We did have uh, late reference to pandemic only, be, and that was a that was a post pick up once we start shooting again. Only because it was like two years out, and it would be very weird for it not to say. It. So organically, we felt like we weren't trying to be like, hey, let's talk about the pandemic. But organically, we had a uh, Tom brings up a good point, which is. The, pan the, the delays, these, these are not, as you can probably tell, they're not, they're not so if they were cranked out on, on, on hideous TV headlines. But it, it, you're right, it really does show. There's, I've never been part of a season of TV like this. Yeah. And this show is so huge and it's so intricate. And I think, ultimately, deeply moving. As a result, like the cumulative effect of all of these changes is you find yourself crying while watching the show. I do. Yeah, I, know. Oh, I think 
think we all do. Uh, uh, I don't think, I don't think, I think it's a cumulative effect of everything that's been done in the show. So, feel it. I know, I do. I think, I think what we lost in, in, in delay and people sort of being impatient, we gained in the passion and ability to, you know, we gained in, in production value and the passion and ability to do what we wanted to do. So, it was, it was not even a trade-off, I think it was an improvement. You talk a lot about post-traumatic stress, you know, from the fallout from the war. How did you approach marking that as part of your season arc? Well, that was part of the season. That started in season one. Uh, we wanted to have some, uh, we were introducing the Charlie character. And we wanted to show how Kalon were, you know, so often on these two kinds of shows, there are space battles. Yeah. It's clear that tens of thousands of people were killed, but you never really deal with them. And we wanted to show how one person carried that trauma with her. And also one of the children on board. There are families on board. And so we wanted to show how one of the, the teenage boy was affected. Right out of the gate in season, in uh, the first season. I, remember I mean, in the first episode. Oh, right. I remember, I really remember Brandon and, and Seth and, and everybody talking about it. Once you saw the fan reaction, and also like that, that battle expanded in, in post production. And the, so the scale of the, the, the death and discretion was even bigger. I mean, it was great on the page, but once you saw it, and we realized we had to, to service it. Like it, it, it affected the fans like that, that we had made a turning point. So I think they responded to it, and that's why it, it had to be addressed. One of the first questions Seth brought in all the writers in season three was if we're keeping Isaac on the bridge, we've got to deal with the fact that his species tried to wipe out all five of Not everyone's going to be comfortable, so we have to address this head on. And it gave us good stuff. And we were, I mean, I know you have to ask this question, but we were aware of this in season two. We had to cut the, the golf, the deleted golf scene for time, and we were going to put it in like, episode nine, like right after. We realized totally they wouldn't be playing golf with us. We would be taped for that reason. Isaac, they wouldn't be playing golf with Isaac and having each other <laughs> yeah. after that. Yeah. Thank you.